Hello and welcome to This Week in Destiny for the fifth week of season 19, Season of the Seraph, commencing January 3rd, 2023. Our fifth featured Nightfall will see us face off against Belmont in the Glassway over on Europa, where you have a chance to get a Pinnacle Engram if you complete the Nightfall with a score of 100k or more. This Nightfall will require you to own the Beyond Light expansion to play. You will be able to earn high-end gear for your character including the Nightfall featured weapon, Exotic Gear, Enhancement Cores, Enhancement Prisms, Ascendant Shards and Adept Mods. The higher the Nightfall difficulty, the more common the drop will be, with the featured weapon and Exotic Gear being uncommon at Hero difficulty, to being common with Ascendant Shards in Grand Masters. Legend and Lower Nightfalls will have 7 Barrier and 8 Overload Champions, with 3 Solar, 5 Void and 12 Arc Shields. Masters will have 12 Barrier and 14 Overload, with 3 Solar and 8 Arc Shields. Your Adept Nightfall modifiers will be Scorched Earth, enemies throw grenades significantly more often, Acute Void Burn, plus 25% Void Damage dealt, and 50% Void Damage received. Hero modifiers include all previous modifiers. Champions Foe, you will face Barrier and Overload Champions. You can either use Intrinsic Exotics or equip Anti-Champion mods to your Arm Armor to defeat them. These mods come from the Seasonal Artifact. Hero modifiers, Extra Shields. Legend modifiers include all previous modifiers. Equipment locked, you will not be able to change your equipment after this activity starts. Match game, enemy shields are highly resistant to all unmatched elemental damage. Arak no, dead vandal spawn web mines. Belmont's algorithm, incoming void and aerial damage is increased. Master modifiers include all previous modifiers. Togetherness, base health regen is reduced. If near another player, health regen is increased. Champions Mob, this mode contains additional champions. And as this is a new season, the Grand Masters will not be returning until January 17th, 2023. But your anti-champion artifact mods for this week's Nightfall are Anti-Barrier Bow and Pulse for one energy, Overload Scout Rifle, Submachine Gun, Auto Rifle and the Grenade Mod Lord Kelvin's Basilisk, where Void and Stasis Grenades disrupt Overloads, all for one energy. You also have exotic weapons and armor that can help with intrinsic mods as well. For anti-barrier, the Kinetic Bow Wishender, the Kinetic Linear Fusion Rifle, Arbalest, the new Kinetic Pulse Rifle, Revision Zero, the Solar Energy Hand Cannon, Ariane's Vow, the Solar Heavy Sword, the Lament, and the Titan Exotic Gauntlet's Second Chance, which gain a second charge of your shield throw melee, which becomes shield piercing and stuns barrier champions. For Overload, the Void Energy Bow Le Monarch, the Arc Energy Linear Trace Rifle Divinity, the Arc Heavy Machine Gun Thunderlord, and the Warlock Exotic Boots the Secant Filaments, which when you drop an empowering rift, any weapon that is fired from inside the well can cause an Overload Champion to be stunned. Next up, Lord Shaxwing's Rumble to the featured Crucible playlist for the fifth week of the season. Delightful! Rumble is a six player free for all Crucible mode. Points are gained through scoring kills against enemy players. A standard kill grants a player 100 points, but certain types of kills grant bonus points, e.g. headshots. Level advantages are disabled in this mode. When a player hits 20 final blows or 8 minutes pass, the players in the top 3 are given the win and the players in the bottom 3 are given a loss. And Valus Forge returns to the tower for the first time this season, bringing with him the Iron Banner. This is a week-long free-to-play Crucible event, which means there will be no Trials of Osiris at the weekend. Power level is disabled, which means you can go into Iron Banner with whatever weapons and armor you would like. Iron Banner also brings with it challenges and a seal to become an Iron Lord. Each day for four days for each character from Tuesday's reset, Lord Saladin will give you the opportunity to receive a pinnacle reward. By hovering over the Iron Banner node on the Director, it will tell you how many games you need to play and with what subclass you need to equip to complete it. You can either play each day and collect each pinnacle, or you can wait until Friday's reset to play all games that you need and receive all four in one go. From three for your first pinnacle, up to 18 in total for all four pinnacles. As a reminder, pinnacle rewards will give you plus five to your power level if you are below the power cap of 1580. But if you are at 1580, the pinnacle will give you plus two in light. 
Players can rank up with Lord Saladin to receive rewards from his reward track. And equipping any Iron Banner armor, ornament or weapon plus Iron Banner emblem will progress your progress faster in ranking up. This is multiplied if you complete the daily pinnacle challenge as well. Iron Banner gear or ornament is 200% for all 5 gear pieces. Iron Banner daily challenge is completed 100% per challenge, 400 for all challenges and Iron Banner emblem is 10% on top. For the Iron Banner gear boost requirements, all 5 pieces must be equipped as gear or ornament for it to take effect. When Iron Banner returns on January 3rd, it brings with it a new game mode called Fortress, where you will have to capture and hold zones while defeating opponents. But there's a twist, a cabal twist. The objectives will change once Keitel and her troops get involved, but Bungie are not revealing the exact details of how Fortress will work just yet because they want us to run up that hill ourselves. Ready if you are. Let's see what's out there. In addition, the weekly Throne World reset refreshes the pinnacle drops for the Wellspring activity, Preservation Mission, and the Vox Obscura Replayable Exotic Mission. Plus, the new exotic mission operates in Serra's Shield in the Helm. The Witch Queen weekly story mission is The Cunning, where the modifiers will be Scorched Earth with Barrier and Unstoppable Champions. The King's Fall Raid Challenge this week is the first encounter, Totems, called The Grass is Always Greener. Players cannot take the same brand type twice in a row. The Vault of Glass Challenge this week is the second encounter, Oracles, called The Only Oracle for You. Players cannot destroy the same oracle more than once. The Deepstone Crypt challenge this week is the fourth encounter, Tanix, called the Core Four. Guardians must dunk all four cores before each DPS phase. The Garden of Salvation challenge this week is the second encounter, Spire Defense, called A Link to the Chain. This is where all Guardians must receive the Enlightened buff at the same time. And the Last Wish challenge this week is the first encounter, Kali, called Summoning Ritual. Players must activate and cleanse all 9 plates, then kill all 9 knights and ogres before damaging Kali. Your pinnacle raid will be the Vow of the Disciple over on the Throne World, which means all challenges will be available for each encounter. These are the first encounter, Acquisition, called Swift Destruction, where Guardians must kill all champions within a few seconds of each other on all rounds. The second encounter, the Caretaker, called Base Information, where runners cannot pick up more than one stack of knowledge on each run. The third encounter, the Upender, called Defenses Down. This is where each player cannot kill more than one Taken Knight in total. The fourth encounter, Rolk, called Looping Catalyst. This is where Guardians must not lose the Leeching Force before the damage phase. Also, with the Vow of the Disciple being the featured raid, this does mean that you can farm the final boss for a chance at the exotic pulse rifle, Collective Obligation. And the pinnacle dungeon for this week will be the duality dungeon on the derelict leviathan found on the moon. Next up, challenges. So for week 5, we again have three classified challenges for next week, but as with the previous weeks, two of them will be a continuation of the challenges we had for the story. These should be More Than A Weapon Part 5. Complete week 5 of More Than A Weapon, with the reward being an Exoframe module and Challenge XP+. And Heist Battlegrounds 5. In Heist Battlegrounds playlist or legend, open 5 Ceres chests and defeat 50 powerful enemies. The Exoframe module and Challenge XP Plus will be the reward. The challenges available in the database are as follows. Quick Heist. Complete a Heist Battlegrounds in under 12 minutes, this will award Challenge XP+. Plus. Timeless Iteration. Acquire the Velus X Ritual Pulse Rifle for Challenge XP++ plus plus and Bright Dust. Iron Sharpens Iron. Complete Iron Banner matches, earn bonus progress for wins. 20 wins will award you with Challenge XP++ plus plus and Bright Dust. Fell and Fallen. Defeat Fallen and Hive bosses in Strikes or Vanguard playlists. Five of each type will award you Challenge XP++ plus plus and Bright Dust. And speaking of Bright Dust, we have our Eververse for the week of January 3rd, 2023. Available this week for Bright Dust we have the Spill the Tea Exotic Emote for 3,250 Bright Dust, the Center 4 Exotic Ghost Shell for 2,850 Bright Dust, the Signal Intercept Legendary Transmat Effect for 450 Bright Dust, 
the Empirical Imperative Legendary Shader for 300 Bright Dust. The Bad Scene Exotic Emote will be available this week for 3,250 Bright Dust. The Keeping Score Legendary Emote for 700 Bright Dust. The Simulation Exotic Ghost Shell for 2,850 Bright Dust. The Wartorn Peregrine Exotic Sparrow for 2,500 Bright Dust. The Gilded Memento Ornament for the Hunter Exotic Helm, Assassin's Cow. The Nouvelle Parapet Ornament for the Titan Exotic Gauntlets, the Sight and Ramparts. And the Alternative Conductor Ornament for the Warlock Exotic Boots, the Geomag Stabilizers, each for 1,500 Bright Dust. The Felicic Pyroclasm Exotic Weapon Ornament for the Prometheus Lens Trace Rifle for 1,250 Bright Dust. And finally, the Thumbs Down Legendary Ghost Projection for 1,500 Bright Dust. Lead the way. For our Legacy Rotation, we have the Loot Rotation for Dares of Eternity, which will be on Week 1's rotation with the Wild Hunt Armor Set and Scatterhorn Armor Set being available. The weapons available this week will be the Arsenic Bite 4B Bow, the Blast Batu Grenade Launcher, the Corsair's Wrath Linear Fusion Rifle, the Deafening Whisper Energy Grenade Launcher, the Dire Promise Hand Cannon, the Enigma's Draw Sidearm, the Escape Velocity Submachine Gun, the Giant 7 Pulse Rifle, the Friction Fire Submachine Gun, the Royal Chase Scout Rifle, and the True Prophecy Hand Cannon. On Europa this week, Critics, the Dark Priestess, will be the Empire Hunt, the Eventide Ruins will be the Eclipse Zone, and the Exo Challenge will be Survival. On the Moon, the weekly story mission should be Beyond. The Trove Guardian is located in Archer's Line. The Wandering Nightmare is the Nightmare of Jax, Claws of Zivurath on the Hellmouth. The Nightmare Hunts this week should be Skolas, Pride, Omnigal, Anguish, and Zydron servitude. The Dreaming City this week is at a weak curse level which means Petrovenge can be found in the Strand and has the Broken Courier mission for the next week. The Blind Well features Scorn enemies and the Plagues, Sycharas and Varkas with the Argonon's Abyss being the Ascendant Challenge, located in the Bale Drowning Wishes Lost Sector. Hello. As a reminder your daily Lost Sector will show you a flag outside which will give you details of champions and burns you will find inside. But if you're new to the game or you're using an alternate character and can't find the flag outside, you will have to run through the Lost Sector normally to have it show up on your map as a legend slash master. Tuesday, January 3rd will be Perdition on Europa for exotic chests, Arc and Void Elemental Shields, Arc Burn with Overload and Barrier Champions. Wednesday, January 4th will be Sepulcher on the Throne World for exotic helmets, Solar and Arc Elemental Shields with a Solar Burn with Unstoppable and Barrier Champions. Thursday, January 5th will be Extraction on the Throne World for Exotic Boots, Arc and Void Elemental Shields with an Arc Burn, with Overload and Unstoppable Champions. Friday, January 6th will be Chamber of Starlight on the Dreaming City for Exotic Gauntlets, Solar and Void Elemental Shields, Solar Burn with Overload and Unstoppable Champions. Saturday, January 7th will be Affilian's Rest on the Dreaming City for Exotic Chests, Void Elemental Shields, Stasis Burn with Unstoppable and Overload Champions. Sunday, January 8th will be the K1 Logistics on the Moon for Exotic Helmets, Solar and Arc Elemental Shields, Void Burn with Overload and Barrier Champions. And then finally back round to Monday, January 9th will be the K1 Crew Quarters on the Moon for Exotic Boots, Solar Elemental Shields, Arc Burn with Overload and Barrier Champions. Guardian down. And that's it for our fifth week of Season of the Seraph. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button. Thank you very much for watching. Alonzi!